Hey, what's up, guys? All right, so we got a brand new chapter of Black Clover out a day early. And all right, dude, dude, if I seem a little too excited to be doing this review, it's because this chapter was hype. Like, seriously, this chapter was fucking amazing. And not only was it good, that's not the only reason why I'm so excited about doing this review. Not only was it good, it also hit on every single beat that I mentioned in my last review that I was hoping that this chapter would address. Like, we get uh, we get Nozelle and Noel teaming up to take out the Compass Elf. We get, you know, the moment where all the siblings finally start to appreciate Noelle and we see her basically shine even more as character. And then we get to see at the end of the chapter, we get to see, we get set up for a moment where Noelle is the only one left fighting against the elf. And we're going to finally get to see Noelle in the next chapter take a W. She's finally going to get a win for herself. Now here's just hoping that Asta and his pot arm herself doesn't come in and save her at the last minute. Don't get me wrong. I love Asta. He's probably my favorite character from the series, you know, aside for Yami. But... I want Noelle to get this win for herself. She deserves a win, a solo win at this late in the game. Anyway, the chapter starts up and we actually get to see Noelle and Nozelle teaming up to fight off against the elf. But for the most part, they're kind of basically on the defensive side. And that's because the elf, she used some kind of like compass magic. Like the compass magic that she basically used to encompass the entire room that they're in is basically making it so that Noelle and Nozelle and also Solid and Nebra can't actually control their mana and their magic outside of a certain distance from themselves. So the closer they are, the more control they have with their magic. But after they get to a certain point, their magic kind of just goes wild. They can't control it anymore. And no matter what attack they send at her, it will automatically miss. So they're kind of on the defensive while she's recklessly just attacking them. You know, just, just sending needles right at Nozel. He's barely blocking them with his Mercury magic. He can only manage so much. And it's to the point where Nozel or Noel can't even use her Nessus Sea Dragon because it takes so much control and it would extend to, out of her reach of control at that point to protect all four of them. And you know, obviously you're thinking, all right, well, the elf's magic is basically area of effect magic. So as long as they can get out of that immediate area where her magic's being activated, they stand a better chance of fighting against her because they'll be able to control their magic again. But here's the thing, though. The magic that she's using also works as a barrier. And it's not just, you know, messing with their mana control. It's also keeping them trapped inside that one room. So they're pretty much, you know, stuck in there. So there's never, there's really nothing they can do at this point. Now, this is when we actually get to see my girl, Noelle, start to shine in this chapter, and she does not stop shining after this moment. All right, so Noelle's trying to think while Nozelle is basically defending all four of them. She's trying to think, all right, I can't control my mana up to the point where I can attack her. I can't use Nessa the Sea Dragon. So what am I going to do? She, like, she's trying to think of a way. She's trying to think of any strategy that she can. She's even thinking, all right, what would Asta, what would all the other members of the Black Wolves do? What kind of crazy plan would they come up with? And it's actually once she realizes that, you know, they're all trapped inside of this barrier that the elf has put up. Basically, once Solid mentions the fact that they can't run, she realizes, oh shit, if we're trapped in here, so is she. And as soon as she realizes that, she thinks back to that first time when she was first introduced in the series and she lost control of her magic and actually had to save her from basically drowning in her own magic. And this is when Noel gets a genius plan of, all right, if we're all trapped in here, then I'm just going to flood the area. I'm just going to I'm going to stop trying to control my mana and I'm going to let it go wild. So she tells Nozelle to get ready and she begins to let her magic go wild like he used to in the beginning of the series and starts to flood the entire room. Now, the four of them are safe because Nozelle, picking up on what Noelle's idea was, put a, like a, what is it called? A, a bubble around them of mercury. So they, you know, have a little pocket of air to breathe in underwater. But the elf, she doesn't have the same luxury. She basically, once the floor, once the entire room gets flooded, she's basically at the crossroads of like, all right, well, either I'm going to drown or I release the area of effects magic so I can get rid of the barrier so I can escape for myself. And as soon as she decides, all right, fuck it, I'm going to release the area of effects magic, Nozel, not missing a single beat, sends his mercury spears at her and takes her out with the combination of, you know, no elves flooding the room so the elf is drowning. She's barely, you know, able to fight back and Nozel spears. They basically just knock her out right there. They don't kill her, but they knock her out long enough to basically to claim the W. Now, the title of this chapter is actually called Siblings, and from this moment on to the end of the chapter, that title basically comes into play and just doesn't stop. All right, so after Nozelle and Noel actually team up to fight the elf, basically all three siblings of Noel basically, they come to realize that Noel's actually kind of badass. She's actually kind of a cool character at this point. And then, I mean, all right, Nozelle kind of already realized that early on he actually kind of recognized her to begin with. But Nebra and Solid, they actually really start to recognize Noelle is not really the piece of shit that we treat her like. And you can even see it a little bit on her face in the details that they're actually starting to regret a little bit that they actually treated her so badly her entire life. Now, that that right there is just a, that's a nice moment right there. 
but after that we get this beautiful moment between Noel and Ozell. Now basically during this moment where we see Noel and Ozell has started to have like a little bit of a heart to heart, we find out that the reason why he's been so down on her her entire life and why ever since she's joined the Magic Knights, he's been mentally trying to break her down, is simply because of the fact that she looks just like their mom. Like seriously, the reason why he's been so hard on her this entire time, throughout the entire series, every time we see the two of them interact until this arc, is because of the fact that she looks just like their mother. And he's afraid that if something were to happen to her, if she was on the front lines and she were to die, he would have to watch his mother die all over again, the person he cared about the most. And because of that, he doesn't want her anywhere near the front lines because he's afraid of losing Noel. And dude, this revelation actually fits perfectly well with every interaction we've seen Nozelle and Noel have throughout the entire series, up until this arc. And that's basically even when we first saw the three siblings interact with Noel. Basically, while Solid and Nebra were basically picking on her, Noel or Nozelle was basically just trying to get Noel to break down mentally so she would quit being Magic Knight, because he didn't want to see his little sister, someone who looked just like his mom, die on the battlefield. He wanted to keep her protected. Now don't get me wrong, he went about it as an asshole, but he still was trying to protect his little sister. And when we get that scene where Nozel is basically apologizing to Noel in this chapter, you can just tell that this is confirmation that Nozel is the biggest Sundari just like Noel is. I mean, and it actually is in keeping with his character. Like think back to when Fugolian was actually taken out by Lich. You can see that despite the fact that Noel or Nozel has basically said throughout the entire time before that, that he hated Fugolian and that you know he was going to beat him or surpass him. Once we saw that Fugolian was taken out, you saw how angry Nozel was. Because Fugolian was Nozel's closest friend. He didn't seem like it, but at the same time, they were best friends. And that's the reason why back when Yami fought against Lich, we saw Nozel show up to basically back him up because he wanted revenge for his best friend being taken out by this guy. And it's also the reason why we saw Nozel sign up to be one of the Royal Knights, is because he wanted to go on this mission in hopes to fight against Lich again, or against Patry, in order to get revenge for his best friend being taken out. So yeah, Nozel is just a big old softy. He's a big old Sundari. But of course, no happy moment can last too long. And basically, while the four siblings are actually starting to finally come together and appreciate Noel, the elf gets back up and she launches three needles right through Nozel, taking him out from the fight. And just from the panel, it looks like he might be dead. Now, obviously, Nozel's not dead. He probably has a healing item on him somewhere that he'll use to heal himself later on. But for the most part, now that he's been taken out, it's basically down just to Nozel, uh, Noel and Solid are the only two left standing. And despite, and actually not even that, Solid, he's so petrified in fear by the elf that it's basically just Noel. So this chapter at the end of it is setting up Noel being the only one left to fight off against the elf. So yeah, like I said, Noel is basically the only one left standing to fight off against the elf. But she's actually at a huge disadvantage because as soon as the elf got up and took out Nozel, she reactivated her area of effect magic but made it so much bigger up to the point where it basically destroyed all the walls around them. So now it's even harder for Noel to control her magic. And because all her magical attacks are long range, she's basically at a huge disadvantage and is not sure exactly what she's going to do. But she knows she's in a situation that's so dire because her siblings are right there. Nozelle's on the ground bleeding out, possibly on the way to dying. Uh, Nebra is possibly on the way to dying as well. And Sal is completely useless in, useless in the situation. That she knows that she has no choice but to stand up and fight. And because of this, she actually does what Yami is always telling the Black Bulls to do, and that's to push past her limits. She starts thinking about maybe what would Asta do in the situation, how would he fight back, and she realizes that no matter what, she can't give up. So she thinks, alright, if I can't control my mana after a certain point, then why don't I just bring all my magic in closer and denser and make it that much to the point where it's on my body. And this is when Noelle gets a brand new magic that actually resembles her mom's magic, which if you remember, her mom actually used kind of like an armor type magic. She activates that magic and creates a giant, this beautiful Valkyrie armor of water around her. And that's where the chapter ends with her ready to fight against the elf. And you know what? I'm actually really hyped that Noelle got this new magic ability that actually resembles her mom in this chapter. Because I, I knew it was only a matter of time before she got something like this. Because pretty much every time their mom was brought up throughout the entire series, it was when someone was comparing Noelle to her. I, I didn't believe the first time we got her mentioned was when uh, Mary Leona and Noelle were in the hot springs and she was talking to Noelle about the fact that her mom was the one who trained her and about how much she resembled her mom, not only in looks but in power. And then and you get in this chapter where you got Nozelle making the comparison again and finally acknowledging Noelle as a member of the civil family. So basically it was only a matter of time that she knew it was going to happen and it's actually more fitting that it was in the chapter where her siblings finally start to acknowledge her that she actually gets in power 
that resembles their mom. But anyway, that's it for the review. I'm actually really happy to see what happens next week when we get to see Noel finally get a win. Hopefully, Asta doesn't show up. Like I said, I love the character, but I want Noel to finally get a win for herself because out of every fight she's been in throughout the entire series, she's only played support. She's, you know, had attacks here and there. She's done some damage, but she's never officially gotten a win for herself. So I'm glad to see I'm glad to see her finally getting one, hopefully. And regardless of whether or not she actually gets one or not, I'm guessing this is this is going to be an epic fight. I mean, I even saw someone in the comment section after I got done reading this chapter. Someone mentioned the fact that they actually hope the anime gets to this point in the series because they want to see this an- they want to see this fight that she's about to get into animated. And I you know I completely agree with them. But yeah, that's it for the review. That's it for the chapter. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, drop me a like, subscribe to the channel. I agree. We appreciate it. Comment down below your thoughts and theories, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.